Hi guys, and welcome to the next stage of my journey designing an assistive device for my neighbour calf. In the empathy phase, I built the foundations by learning about calf's needs and wants, and defined the challenge of how might we keep calf's hands active in a fun and engaging way. The next step was to take all my key insights and use them as a guide to generate creative and impactful design ideas. The goal wasn't to come up with a refined design, but rather explore potential options before selecting a key concept to move forwards with. The starting point for my ideation was a simple text brainstorm where I referred back to the things Kath had said about her life and disability to help me inform my ideas. The aim was to go for quantity over quality at this point, and my ideas generally fell under two categories supporting Kath's existing hobbies that involved hand movement and devices that encourage hand activity through exercise. I followed this up with some online research of each area and dropped in images of existing products. This helped me understand what was already available on the market and the visuals would also serve as a source of inspiration for my own unique concepts later down the line. After a few hours of idea generation and online research, it came time to narrow these options down to a single key idea. Similar to when I was framing the challenge, many of these ideas would be valid routes to go down, so I needed to ask myself a key question. Where can I impact and innovate with the time, skills and tools I have available? I use this question as a driving factor in eliminating a series of ideas. Here are some examples. In my research of rotary cutters, I concluded that there wasn't a huge requirement for innovation. A whole range of ergonomic options with various features was already available on the market and at a low cost so it wouldn't make sense for me to try and fix a problem that had already been solved. A device with an app for hand exercises was an area I found personally quite interesting, but learning the necessary app design skills wasn't really feasible in the time scale that we had for this project. And although there was certainly room for innovation with an exoskeleton gripping aid, the fact that Kath had hinted towards her preference for subtleness in assistive technology made me question um, its impact in terms of desirability. Just a quick aside and one thing to note whilst looking into existing solutions is that you should make the person that you're designing for aware of anything that you find that might benefit them. If nothing else comes out of the Makeable Challenge, finding a great existing product for your champion is helpful in its own right. So with several of the options eliminated, I turned my attention to the ones that I saw potential in and began generating some simple visualizations of these ideas. These ideas included a hand crank generator that could potentially power appliances on the boat while she was using it, um, a smart electronic stress ball that could automatically mold itself into certain positions to support exercises for osteoarthritis, um, an elephant themed fidget exerciser that again focuses on specific hand and finger movements, a macrame jig device that could hold material for her and have integrated design templates, and finally an adjustable chopping board that could support Kath's love of cooking. As you can see, we kept the detail to a minimum on these sketches, as they were really just a placeholder for the ideas at this point. I then headed over to Kath to discuss the ideas with her, and see if any in particular stood out to her. She was immediately drawn to one idea, the elephant themed fidget exerciser, and as I explained the connections between hand exercises specifically for arthritis, uh, we excitedly came to the conclusion that this was the most desirable, feasible and impactful idea of the bunch. So, with the key ideas selected, I mapped out the specific design criteria to follow on a priority diagram. As always, I was inspired by my empathy studies, as well as my market research and knowledge as an industrial designer. The most important criteria were listed in the center with the less important features on the outer circle. I enjoy using this technique because we have to be realistic and accept the fact that we can't always incorporate every single thing into a design. And the priority diagram helps you to keep the important stuff at the forefront of your design journey. Okay, so that brings us to the end of the idea generation phase, and I can't wait to start bringing this concept to life. As a quick recap on my top tips, use your empathy studies to drive your ideas. When brainstorming, be loose and explorative with the mindset that there are no wrong answers. When analyzing options, do your research on the market and look for creative opportunities where you can to have a positive impact. And finally, wherever possible, involve your end user in this process. Right. See you in the next video where we'll be designing and making our first prototype.